Hey, so let's talk about addition. Now, numerically speaking, it's quite easy. You just add up the individual components of the two vectors, or if there's more than two vectors, uh, however many vectors there are, it doesn't matter. And so in this case, it would be 3, 2, 0. And the Bifrost way of adding vectors is even more easy. You just have to put down an add node and plug in both vectors or however many you have. And then this out here is going to be the result. So I place this here. The new vector is going to be red. And um, well, just to visualize this, you can ignore this part. It doesn't matter for the explanation. This is my result. And um, we should see that indeed it's three units in X and two in Y. Now, how does this relate to these arrows? Well, in this case we're doing yellow plus blue. So what happens is, or what you have to do is you just move the blue one to the end of the yellow one. And then we can see, we just draw an arrow between them from the beginning to the end. And that's the resulting vector. That's how these are related. If I undo this, and I do, what if I do blue plus yellow? So I just grab the yellow one, do the same principle, align it like this. And we can see it's the same deal in terms of the end position here. So we can say that A plus B or B plus A, it doesn't really matter. So this is good news because then we don't have to worry about, you know, which order we add things in. Um, okay. Now, there's something interesting, I think, about the vectors. If I change the blue one to be kind of a mirrored version of the yellow one across this y-axis, so what would that be? Minus 1, 2. What we can see is that the resulting vector is kind of an average of the two added vectors. So this could be useful in some cases. And this would also be true for more than two vectors, right? So we're just going to add a bunch of vectors, and the resulting one, in terms of the direction, will give you the average. Okay. But how is this, I mean, how is this all useful? Well. If I do this one again, imagine that this yellow vector represents a point position. So here's a point. And I want to move this point in a certain direction. So I can think of the blue one as the displacement vector. And if I have that vector, or any vector, you know, it doesn't matter, and I want to move the point in a given direction, well, all I need to do is just add that displacement vector to my point position vector, and I can move that point in a certain direction. And if I, you know, this is a length 2 here, but we already know how to change the length of a vector. So if I want to move it just one unit, well, I would have to multiply this by 0.5. And so... This could be, for instance, in a particle system, this could be thought of as a force acting on the particles. So if this were a wind force and this were the only force in the particle system, then for every frame, this particle would move two units to the right. So I want to look at a, another example that you might have seen in other videos where we're moving points along their normals points of a mesh. So let me bring in the sphere. I don't need this. I'm also going to use a pass node, which is going to make it easier to swap the mesh. But this doesn't do anything. Um, this is going to be the same. There's not going to be any difference coming out of here. And I need the point position. And the point normals. 
So the point normal is my displacement vector and these are my positions. So easy enough. I just have to add this to the point position. And then, oh no. And then I have to set these positions back to my object like this and as a result what we're getting is this so we can see these points have moved along their normals uh, but we can control this or well, the scale of it or how much these points are being displaced by scaling the normal We've already done this before. So we're going to create a value node. If this is zero, we shouldn't see any displacement. And yep, so now they're on top of each other. But now I can just, you know, control the effect, how much this is going to be displaced. Cool, well, so I just want to quickly visualize this with the arrows too. So first of all, I'm going to draw the point positions. And actually, I'm going to move this over a bit. Make this smaller. Don't need the numbers. Um, so I think it was a yellow vector. OK. So these are my point positions. So these arrows represent wherever the original points are. And I'm going to duplicate this. Now I want to visualize the normals. They were somewhat bluish, I think. So these are my scaled normals. Now you can see that they're drawn from the origin, which it doesn't really matter where we draw them because they don't really have a location, these vectors. but. I think it might be easier to visualize this or to see what they're, what point they're associated with by drawing them from the actual point. So let me do it like this. And again, I mean, you don't have to worry about this stuff. This is just for visualization purposes. All the important stuff is happening here um, because these are compounds that are created. So now if I scale this, we can see what's happening with the normal vectors. And lastly, I need one more because I want to show the vector for the resulting point positions. And this one was red. And this would be this business here. So there we go. And maybe we want to just focus in on one particular point. So now we should be able to see what's happening. Yellow one is the original point position. The purplish one is the displacement vector, which is based on my normals. And I'm scaling these normals, and I'm adding the normals to the point position. And as a result, we'll get the red one, which is the world space vector representation for the resulting point of that mesh. And the next video, I'm going to talk about subtraction. Cheers.